When the stars go out each night They remind us where you are The soulful, sultry voice of Paula Hines, gospel singer, jazz artiste, and an extraordinary stage performer who is totally in tune with her audiences, whether in Barbados, the region, North America, or Africa. But where did it all start? From birth, even before birth, I was in church. That, that was all I knew. And um, so it was like automatic. And, but then you got your own um, revelation of who God is and, and you understand how fantastic and awesome he is. So you fell in love with God for yourself as like somebody recommending a meal and you're like, hey, it's good. But then when you really appreciate it, realize, wow, this cuisine is nice. So that's how I see God as lovely cuisine, varying dishes and exciting. So um, I will tell you, I don't limit myself only to gospel. I, I love to dabble in jazz. I, am, I won't say I'm a reggae person. I, I don't think I, that genre um, brings out the best in me. Somebody might say no, and they might say I've never really dabbled in it deep enough. Uh, but I love jazz. I, I like to mess with the notes and play with the feeling. And um, how should I put it? Like finding the mood of a song uh, and, and interpreting it. I tell people um, each song carries a mood, it, it carries a, a storyline. And when you really capture that, you have expressed the song. Yeah, so that's what I try to do. gospel artist who dabbles in a secular genre might prove a challenge for some Christians. But for Paula, it's all a matter of interpretation. We've made it secular gospel to two extremes. And, and as a Christian, if you do a secular song, oh my gosh, you need Jesus. Let's just bring out the oil and just bind her and rebuke her and cast, girl, cast her out. But if, if you think of, I was remembering uh, when I was in church, and I'll, I'll use this analogy, this um, really happened. I was in church and... Um, the pastor was preaching, and the only song that had come to my head to express to God how I felt at that moment was, the closer I get to you. Those lines just went over my head. The closer I get to you, the more you make me feel like giving you all of God. And when I thought of God, that's what, what I thought. The closer I got to you, to him, I realized how much he does love, how much he does care, and he does forgive, that you just felt like giving me all, and wow. But in my head, I was saying, God, to go up there now and, and like do this as the closing hymn would be like, she needs a prayer. He's super, he's super, super, better than Superman. With me and music um, and God, he is in all I do. If I sing inseparable, um, I still see God in that. Um, if I do, when I fall in love, it will be forever. Wow. When, when you fall in love, you want it to be forever. And God is love. Um, if I do a song, I was telling somebody, to even if I did Alison Hines' Roll It, the concept we have of Roll It now is about a lady and her behind because people have thought, they've seen videos and they see the buttocks moving and stuff like that. But Roll It, if you listen to the lyrical content of it, it is empowering women to stop waiting around on handouts. Get up and do something with your life. So for me, Roll It would take on a different form. And for me, interpreting Roll It would be stressing on women, men, get up and help yourself and stop waiting for someone to do it for you. She released her first CD in 1995 and re-released an updated version entitled And She Sang in 2008. Now at 40 and with years of performing behind her, Paula is well placed to offer advice to up and coming singers. Don't ever sit on your laurels because you're good at something. That's when you lose the essence of getting better. There's always more to learn. There's always Fantasia at the BMAs. I sat in awe of her. I was like, God, a little bit more. Heinzy got put peace more in there. So she inspired me to do, to do more, to, to, 
be more expressive. I looked at another singer that was beside me, my friend Deb, and I said, Debbie girl, we really got boss. So you see this? Hand clapping, standing up straight, they ain't walking. We need to get to the core and let people see who we are. I'm not saying that we have to now go and wear minis. She looked fantastic in hers, uh, but that's not it. If you want to go into singing, um, and make sure you're good at it. Don't just be mediocre. If you have to go and get voice training, do that. If you have to take singing lessons, do that. It's going to cost you. Uh, sometimes it's going to cost you friends. It's, it's going to cost you your free time, your play time, because you want to be good. And, and just like if you want to be an accountant, there are steps you have to take. Being on the top of your game, there are steps that you have to take. Although singing is her love, Paula has another great passion, helping people. In the, I say in the measure of my days, I, I don't want people to say, you know, fantastic woman who could sing any note. After singing the you note, know, what did she do? Can someone say, well, I was down and then she picked me up. I, I needed five bucks and she gave me five bucks. What's the measure? I don't want it to be in the accumulation of things. So in terms of things, some of my friends and my family think I'm not sentimental. Um, if you need a shirt, I'll give you it. Because I try, honestly. And it, people say it's bad to me, it's good. I try not to hold on to things. You can also cultivate bad habits, like hanging around the block. Um, it is not a life for you. And we at the ICSA want to push it. It's not the place for you. Drugs are not for you, they are not. One way she gives back is by working in schools as a volunteer with the National Council on Substance Abuse. Her primary focus is building self-esteem and boosting the confidence of young people. I find that um, too many of our students, uh, they lack the passion for school, the passion to learn. You find they go through the day, whatever whatever and that can be from primary and secondary school and I repeat this is my opinion not NCSA's it's P. Hines talking um, and like even in my neighborhood um, there there are people around me that I'm like father give them the will to push past you know you see little children just aimlessly about sometimes if you see them write they can't write too well and it's like what happened to the books I remember when I was young anything I would read it Except pornography, but you know, but you want a book, you want to read, you, you want to know, and you lose yourself in the adventures now. Um, sometimes I'm an ask a child, tell me a story, start with dog, and they're like, and? You tell me dog, I to tell you a whole story. Once upon a time there was a dog, his name was Bob, and his eye was bright, and he barked, and he only had one tooth. We've killed the passion in people. So we have sometimes robot people going around doing what they hate and never being honest enough to say I hate this job I want, I want to be a school teacher but because society says you have to be this or you have to live a certain lifestyle or, or pedigree whatever they just stick to the mold and end up at the end of the days they might die at 85 and be so miserable but they never can admit it so for me I say Michael Jackson start with the man in the mirror to thine own self, I think that's Shakespeare, I hope I'm quoting it right, to thy own self, be true, be true. While she enjoys her time with children, like these at St. Lucy's Primary, she wants to expand her mission to the streets. I remember a day I was in town and one of the guys I was telling God, I would love a hug now. I want the street characters just came and gave me this big hug and a kiss. And I was like, all right, God, you really have a sense of humor. But it was cool, it wasn't like, oh my God, get off of me, you're nasty, you smell bad. And I think that sometimes we don't understand how our lives can change. You Think about Haiti. There must be people in Haiti who had, amid the poverty, had things going on, but the earthquake just changed the status quo. We don't know what's going to happen to Barbados. So I remind people that you're human and, and we're all in this together. And your status quo can change. A fire can change that. A hurricane can change that. Just life can change that, you know what I mean? And, and you realize that once you were proud, you didn't need anyone and now you're on the bottom ladder and now you do need someone. So that's what I want to do. It's impossible to see Paula these days and ignore her signature hairstyle. It has grown on me. I know people hate it. 
uh, uh, was it Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday. A lady came very nicely and sweet, and she's like, what are you going to do with your hair? I, I said, nothing. She said, oh, but I don't like it. Very nice and polite. I said, but I do. <laughs> so it's going to be around for a while, you know. I, I am I am I am not knocking the the relax and the jerry curls and stuff. So this is not like a I am black kind of thing and all of you relaxers are going to die. You know, it's it's just me in a phase of not having to comb my hair too regular. I just comb it when I wash it and that's like once a week. Because after that it's quite hard. <laughs> but I like it. I think it takes off some years off of me. It, it frees me up because um, at first I was like, oh my gosh, everybody was like, they loved my hair. It was like, get compliments on, on my hair a lot. And I, I was like, God, it, but my hair is gone, but my hair is gone. And then, you know how God speaks to you in that still small voice, but did it change the character of who you are? And then I realized, no, it didn't. It hasn't changed me. It's just a style is uh, another facet to me. I think it has brought back the youthfulness of me, the playful side of me. <laughs> Batman swinging on a rubber band in comes Superman I need a Spider-Man my hero. She's also so quick to share that she has reached a stage in life where she's at peace with who she is and what Batman she has accomplished. The peace comes from knowing Paula Hines have nothing to prove. So I am not afraid if I start to sing and the note is too high and I have to say it to an audience of five million. Okay, keyboardist, wow, that was great. Let's take it down because there's no embarrassment. You know, so if, if you think that you have something to lose, then you'll be freaked out all the time. They're all heroes, but they're not my hero. I'm going to tell you who a hero is. Jehovah Chira, who's God has created us all with, with unique gifts. And I put it simply. I may be a rose, you might be a chrysanthemum, somebody is a hibiscus. All beautiful, unique, and special, and, and one of a kind design. And in the, God's garden, He has given us the room to grow, to bloom, to be who you are. So the Fantasias of this world don't scare me. The Whitney Houston's, whoever, name it, whatever. They don't scare me. Because if I'm called to sing after, before, during, while, I will just do what I have to do. Being honest, I I really cannot see myself not singing a note. And I, I tell my I tell myself and I, I really beseech God, whoever comes into my life, that they can appreciate that I love this is something that is like breathing to me. I cannot see myself not doing it. Well, the sun is 